Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, John, we're ready. We're not going to last long over here. And Ashland did not escape from the camera. I didn't. You did not. Okay, so um, I only have a few notes here. All right. I'd like to start by thanking Valdosta Utility Director Daryl Muse and the directors of the Two Wastewater Treatment Plant and the rest of the staff for this tour. Y'all right. been offering this for a long time, we finally took it up. <laughs> I'll have you know it was her, Marilee, that provoked this particular event. Um, I would also like to thank Valdosta, see I'm doing it twice. <laughs> In particular, Scott here, for sending the update data in a spreadsheet where it's easily accessible of the weekly water testing on the rivers that Valdosta does. And we have I haven't published the last two weeks because you're ahead of me, but it'll get up there. The rest of it is on the web where everybody can see it. And this demonstrates, this data demonstrates something that I've been trying to impress on people downstream. It ain't just Valdosta. In fact, last Wednesday, the numbers for fecal coliform were above the state limit at North Valdosta Road and at Georgia 133, which are both upstream from the Wittaguchi Wastewater Treatment Plant. And this is not uncommon. Now, they don't do any measurements farther upstream because, like, they're measuring for their city. So that's why we're starting walls, 20 river keepers, starting the water quality testing program. So people in, did we lose the one person from the county downstream? Well, I'll send in the video. People downstream and also Scott Coons, we did invite him, who want to do something about the wastewater situation, if they'd like to assist with that, with uh, the, waste, the water quality testing program. Somebody got one of those uh, uh, resolution thingies? Anyway, the other thing is we're circulating a resolution to the Georgia Environmental Protection Division to do what Florida and Alabama already do. Director Muse was just showing me Florida does a map mm -hmm. of whenever Florida gets a report of a uh, spill, any kind of NPDES pollution spill, they put it on the website the same day. You can sign up for an email list where you get an alert, and they do a map of the last 30 days. So. Florida does it, Alabama does it, there is no reason Georgia can't do it. So any organization that would like to sign up on this, for example, our Santa Fe River, just as an example, yes, um, please do because I made a point of not limiting it to Georgia organizations. Just in two days we got Flint River Keeper, Georgia River Network, uh, Coosa River Basin Initiative and Environment Georgia and the number will increase because Georgia River Network, and I'm pretty sure Georgia Water Coalition are going to be getting more people to sign this, but Florida names would be very welcome. Um, all right, when I say it's not just Valdosta, we know in the last year there have been significant spills from Lowndes County, which is very definitely correct. And if I'm wrong here, it's a separate sewer system from Valdosta. Yes. Right, and Lowndes County does not have a fancy treatment plant like this. They have a land application system, which is like a couple of thousand feet from the state line. So they've had two spills in July, Lowndes County has. Tifton has had uh, two significant spills in the last, 20, in the last 12 months, and Quitman had a spill uh, during Hurricane Irma. So those are ones that we know of. It ain't just Valdosta, and it's not just them. This, this testing data, thanks again to Scott and the city, demonstrates, and with our water quality testing program, we'll try to pin down where it is, that something getting to our rivers that is not coming from Valdosta. Another example is downstream from this plant. It's good, it's good, until you get to the Alapahoochee River, just this side of the state line, then it's above the fecal coliform limit again didn't come from Valdosta. Where did it come from? We want to know. And we can't do anything about it until we know where it's coming from. Um, so that's mostly what I have to say, aren't you relieved? Yeah, so... Um, yeah. So um, I, I would um, 
perhaps our Santa Fe River would like to say a few words. Just thank you very much for the invitation. This has been a spectacular uh, uh, tour and uh, educational experience. And, uh, oh, well, that was Valdosta City that did that. <laughs> thank you all very You're much. You're welcome. It's very well said. And since, um, as I mentioned, uh, I did video of a lot of the early stuff, and people will say they can't hear, so if it's something especially important you want people to know in Georgia and Florida, could you please repeat it briefly on camera? Yeah, yeah I'll say a couple of words just quickly. Uh, one question that was asked was about uh, the specific incidents that happened um, uh, at the with the Coochie plant and at the Mud Creek plant. And you know, during the tour, uh, you know, you know, we try to point out what efforts we go through to make sure that anything we introduce back into the environment is as clean as possible. Uh, and one of the reports, uh, you know, reported that we had a sewer spill here at the Mud Creek facility, and uh, we wanted to show uh, everyone what actually spilled and what actually happened. You know, the water quality that got reported as a sewer spill, a raw sewer spill, the, the quality of quality of that water that was discharged, and some of the steps that we go through just to ensure if there is a release that uh, there are some secondary uh, processes in place to contain that. Uh, one of the issues here that happened, you know, we had at the clarifier, we had one of the drains uh, become clogged and uh, it overflowed the clarifier. Uh, that water is about 95% finished through our treatment process. It needs to be filtered and it needs to go through a UV uh, process. Uh, the water went into a, into a detention pond which uh, then was collected underneath the detention pond into a concrete basin and went out through a, uh, from lack of a better scientific term, a drain field that uh, makes its way out to the creek. So, uh, you know, we think that water was, uh, was uh, it definitely wasn't raw sewage as, as it was reported and I think everyone here saw the quality of the water that was released. Uh, the other uh, thing that we got asked about specifically was the issue at Mud Creek. Uh, we, had a, we had an equipment failure. And at that facility, we have redundancy built into the treatment process there. You know, most of the processes that you saw there, you saw one, two, three, or four uh, processes there. And the system, most of those systems are, are capable of operating independently. So if one fails, the other one can take on the process and maintain operation. Well, we had a piece of equipment fail. The next piece of equipment did its job. It came online and tried to uh, handle all of the flow. It became uh, this, it became lodged and went into a fault mode and caused a sewer overflow at that facility. Uh, you know, we put a lot of things in place to make sure that doesn't happen again. That facility is about two years old, and uh, we're still working through some of the uh, nuances of a new treatment facility. So we've added some extra alarming capabilities there. We've added some additional bypass capabilities there. And uh, we've also went through an extensive training with the operators there in case they find themselves in a situation where they have become overcome by events uh, at a facility that uh, with a push of a button, they can get help and folks would be on their way. And if they're not capable of pushing a button, button the system's going to alert operators to begin the process of getting to the treatment facility so that we can have additional staff there. So uh, we're doing a lot. Uh, we've had four spills here in the last 12 months, I believe. That was the number. Four spills uh, that were uh, that were significant. Uh, you know, we don't want that to happen either. You know, uh, you know we work diligently. We spend a lot of money to make sure it doesn't happen. And I think every day uh, we emphasize, these guys emphasize to their crew members, staff members, how important it is. And no one's in this industry because they want to get rich. You know, all of these guys, that now from the last operator, is uh, concerned about the environment. That's why you get into this industry, because you have an environmental concern. And uh, they all share that belief, and, uh, and uh, they are uh, working hard to try to make sure they do their part to, to ensure that uh, that we uh, protect this environment. So, with that said, uh, you know, I'll take any questions that I didn't address. Uh, and if anyone has any, any, any uh, insight that they would like to share, uh, things that can possibly be done to make this operation more successful, I'd be glad to hear them. I'd just like to um, 
I, I think I, I know what you meant, um, but you uh, on that last explanation about uh, the equipment failure. Um, you started with Mud Creek. It was with the Coochies. And I, yes, I know you meant with the Coochies. So I just want to make that you. clear. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, and, and I do have a question uh, based on what I've seen today. Um, does the Withlacoochee and the Alapaha have TMDLs? Uh, total maximum daily loads? I'm not aware of them. Okay. Yes, they do. Because my, my question is when we were at the Withlacoochee plant, and we were looking at the water that was clear, mm -hmm. and we all know that clear water doesn't necessarily mean clean water. Um, it looks clean, but you know there's a certain uh, chemistry to it. And um, when um, uh, Mike was explaining that the nitrates, for instance, I only targeted nitrates because mm -hmm. it, it seems like a, a you know easy one to target was between 1.9 and 2.9 uh, parts per million mm -hmm. for that particular. It, it, whatever, as far as discharge um, into the Withlacoochee, um, our, in, in, the, uh, in uh, the Suwannee River, our TMDL is 0.35. So 0.35 parts per million. Now that's for the river itself. The 0.35 is for springs? Yeah, for the springs. For the springs. Not the most treatment facility the there. The river itself is based off of total nitrogen, not off of Mm -hmm. Or it's different. Yeah, I don't believe there is a TDM, TMDL for different yeah, loads in the in the Withlacoochee in, in the Georgia side. I, I believe that the, uh, the limitations are associated with fecal coliform, which yeah. are largely connected with stormwater runoff uh, within the urban um, section of the uh, of the city. There are TMDLs for certain segments of the Lithicucci. There's one for a segment of the Lithicucci for lead, for example. Right, right. Okay, well, and where are my manners? There are two people here from the Swanee River Water Management <laughs> Ministry. Would either of you like to say a few words? I just want to express my appreciation to the city of Valdosta for having, uh, for hosting us. I've had a separate one already set up with Daryl for two weeks hence, but this made a lot more sense to come with this one instead just because of the interest. So it's been very instructive and you know, if there's anything that we can do to help things, we definitely like getting information uh, yeah. as you know as soon as we can get it. And I think uh, Ashlyn has you know we've talked about that some as well. So yeah, I think uh, yeah, Tom, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. But even now, I think you, know, you and Scott have had a pretty long relationship of getting sharing information back and forth, uh, and getting you know uh, whenever we have information available or something on your end that, that you need, you know, just call us and you know we'll make sure you get. Speaking of clarifications, on this letter here, in which 11 counties in Florida have banded together to get the North Central Florida Regional Planning Council to, uh, well, it's not clear what they actually want to do, something about Valdosta sewage. And I applaud their activity, but um, uh, it says here 5.0 million gallons of raw sewage into Mud Creek. Would that be incorrect? That would be incorrect. So I thought, and I would like to point out that Valdosta's press release always was clear it was a secondary effluent. So was WCTV, so was the Walls blog report, mm -hmm. and Valdosta sent the assistant uh, director of this very Mud Creek plant to explain it, which we have on video. So mm -hmm. I, uh, it, it's great that they're going to this effort, and I look forward to them, uh, you know, they're just starting, so I look forward to them catching up with what went before. <laughs> I also would like to thank you um, very much because I was involved loosely with the 2015 um, visit that, that John had arranged uh, with the wastewater treatment to understand it then. Uh, I can only be on phone call and unfortunately I can't thank you very much. But, um, and then to have this experience really uh, um, allows me to, to understand where the problems are. Um, and, and how hard you all have worked to try and, and remedy them. Um, I, I, um, I, I, I will look at discharges into waterways. I'm not, do we do that? Do we do that before? Do we discharge um, treated effluents into our waterways? I think there's a few in South Florida. In Florida, yes. yes. Yeah. 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 Y
Oh, yeah, we GRU. I mean, I think a GRU, you know, they've yeah. got a deep well injection in Kanapaha at their Kanapaha facility. They've got another one that goes to Haynes Prairie through the Sweetwater wetland, mm -hmm. for example. For, yeah. Through a wetland, which is kind of what you have back well, here. Well, now, but I mean, that's yeah. relatively new. It was, new. it was discharging through a treatment plant before, so, you know, but that's not an example. But that's causing the, the fecal coliform. I mean, it seems like that's possibly. Yeah, typically, typically, when it leaves this plant, the fecal out of this plant after UV is zero. It's zero. And, and actually, like I said, you know, we measure upstream and downstream, and typically, yeah, the numbers are higher upstream than they are downstream. Typically. Now, there are some instances where that number flips, you know, but yeah. What's causing it? You know, we all need to find out what's, what the real reason is. It's I think it's stormwater. Yeah, I suspect it's stormwater. I suspect it's runoff. You know, but Animal husbandry? Any yeah. I think there is a, uh, a horse farm or something back up. We, we had discussed that before. Uh, just north of Valdosta, we had seen that up there before. But a lot of it is, is runoff. Uh, now, a lot of it's that's right. That's right. Now, one thing that we did, Scott, and prior to me getting here, so I, I'm not taking credit for it. He's got me doing it before I got here. You know, from time to time, we'll take, we'll pull a sample of that fecal, mm -hmm. and we're, there's a lab in Tennessee we have to send this to mm -hmm. to determine if it's human. If, if they do DNA testing on it to see if it's human or animal. Do you do sucralose testing? And it yeah. came back animal. It wasn't human. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, you know, I don't, it's been a couple of years since we've done yes, that. Yes, right? it's been uh, probably a year and a half or two years, but. Uh, time to time, we want to be more specific on the numbers we get. Again, we've got a bunch of different sites, a lot of sampling that we do. But the state don't require us to do. We just do it to be able to provide information to anybody that wants to come in and say, hey, you know, that way we can show what's coming in the city and what's going out. So, again, this is just something that we did to, to have additional information that the state don't require us to do. We feel that it's better for us uh, that we have this information in case something does happen. Mr. Quarterman, and, and we had spoke earlier about the water that's coming in upstream. When this water comes in, we have fecal coliform numbers that are really, really high. Right. But, I mean, as far as being able to go back and see where they come from, we don't know. But that's why, at some point, if, if, if someone from your organization was to pull a fecal up there and say, well, you know, this comes from you, well, now, now we've got past information to be able to show that this, this is not. So that, that's the reason we have so many locations, we do so much testing, is to provide information to anybody who you know wants to come in. Everybody knows the history, but we want to forget that, and we're working hard to move on and go forward and hopefully have no spills. That's what we would like to do. So we're doing that. We're, we're actually started a new fog program, which we're running now with the city to stop some, some small spills downtown. We've got a lot of working pieces right now. Everything is going really, really well. Uh, but it, it takes time just like everything else, but we're, we're getting there. And I can assure you everybody's working extremely hard to keep this from happening again. Oh, and the rest of those testing points Scott's going to have available for us sometime soon as well. If yes, I yes, I've, yes. Uh, that's some watershed stuff that we're working on. Yep. And uh, Walls is assembling testing kits. This one doesn't actually have the fecal coal form in it, but we're working on adding that and getting some more kits so we can move along. We've got half a dozen people trained to do the testing, so we're going to start with that as soon as we get the kits assembled. All right, great. Yeah, Valdosta does a lot of testing, but you know they're a city; they're not responsible for far beyond their bounds. And as Sawani Riverkeeper, you know the whole basin in both states is our concern, and I'd like to congratulate Sawani River Water Management District on doing a lot of testing. <laughs> yes. Especially the around person. springs. And Arlene's the person who's running that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's still some gaps, and as near as we can tell, the big problems are coming from Georgia. Now, we don't know. We're going to try to find out. So we're going to try to fill in some of the gaps from what you're doing, and we're going to do some testing in Georgia that you know, is beyond what Valdosta is doing. Mm -hmm. Next. Director News, anything else you think? No, you know? no final words. I'm glad uh, you know. I'm glad you guys took the time out of your schedule to come and uh, look to see what we do here. Uh, you know, we're proud of where we're headed. We're not proud of where we've been, but uh, you know, like I said, everyone's uh, on board from the city council, you know, all the council folks, uh, down to the city manager, to uh, you know, the guy that comes here and.
cuts the grass and blows off the sidewalk in the afternoon and knows that don't blow that in the storm drain, you know, don't blow it over there because, you know, we're all vested in this. And uh, I think that's what it takes. Everyone knows what the mission is. And uh, so they can find out what their part of making sure that mission is successful. So uh, we're all uh, we're all aboard. Thank you. Well, I'll have to, let me just say thank you. Um, as a long-term Valdosta resident, I'm very happy to see where our tax dollars are going and being well spent and uh, uh, in a very high quality, uh, very professional organization uh, here in uh, this end of the uh, city's activities in managing water. So, totally yeah, impressive and appreciate it. All right, great. And for the water management district, we got a water plant. You got the welcome to come to tour. All right. Thank you. Thank you all.